Hey everybody, this is the Bond Renegade, and I want to talk to you today about a big problem that I'm witnessing in the bond market as it relates to retail investors. Um, before I tell you exactly what the problem is, let me tell you how I came to discover and very intimately understand this problem. About six years ago, I had traded my first bond on behalf of a financial advisor um, who was located in Texas. That advisor purchased bonds from my team and myself at an average minimum markup of about $10 per bond. Um, he was technically a client of my team and not my, my own personally. Uh, because of that, his bond business was often handled by one of my partners. And, you know, I just check in from time to time, make small talk, and just keep that relationship going. Well, within a year's time, that advisor paid my firm over fifty thousand dollars in commissions and markups and he would trade in million or multi-million dollar blocks I'm not going to name that advisor or any of the other advisors that I used to cover um, but just for example another advisor client of one of my teammates paid over a hundred thousand dollars in commissions and markups um, within six months time so uh, these advisors are educated, intelligent financial professionals. They have, on the low end, um, 50 million to hundreds of millions of dollars in assets that they manage on behalf of individuals and institutions. These guys and girls have advanced degrees in economics and finance. They've got expensive financial technology, you know, software and analytics tools. Um, they've got access to other specialists and vendors, and um, Let's not forget that these guys are in the business of professionally managing money. They overpaid for their bonds every time they purchased them. A little over a year of doing this started to open up my eyes, and I sort of had an aha moment and said to myself, you know, if I can do this here at what I personally consider to be fairly ridiculous rates of markup, okay, then surely I could go somewhere else down the street slash prices in half and do the world a big favor and maybe make a little bit of money in the process. Well, I found a pretty large broker dealer to go work for and um, I became one of their bond traders. Uh, I kept inventory in front of our reps who were um, reselling these securities to their clients. Uh, I'd, I'd offer advice and work on portfolios for trade and swap ideas pretty regularly. Um, and the ultimate goal here was to make the firm and the broker's money. Um, the big difference here between um, this shop and my previous shop is that my customers went from being independent, fee-only financial advisors to being commissioned brokers. So where at my previous shop, when I'd sell a bond to an advisor, the client whose account the bond wound up in, they paid the same price that the advisor paid, you know, free of any extra commissions or markups. Um, now at this current broker dealer I had to run you know different yield analysis for different pricing to one help our brokers make money um, while at the same time trying to protect the uh, client whose account that the bonds would would end up in so there was a sort of a balancing act there we had to help our reps make money and help the clients get a fair trade um, well almost a year of starting at this broker dealer we had the 2008 financial crisis and everything sort of hit the fan. Like a lot of people, I'd spend every day at work trying to you know, sell muni resets, buying money markets, uh, just fighting to get liquidity anywhere I could for our clients. Um, our trade desk was scrambling just to keep it together and you know, we sort of watched our firm's stock price plummet. Um, people were packing up their, their boxes and ready to hit the door. Um, well. Lehman had gone, things started to unwind, we were recovering, um, and about that time we were told by our firm, um, my team was told, that they were going to axe our bond trading desk and they were going to outsource the bond business to another firm. Well, can you guess who was going to be handling the bond business now? It was the firm that I left previously because I thought I could do better. So. <laughs> um, I fought tooth and nail to try and save uh, a few guys jobs you know my cries fell on deaf ears I stuck around as part of my contract for the transition you know within 60 days the trading volume began to pick back up 
and those ridiculous markups that I had left before, well, they were back again. So I documented every single trade, and I made a report for my firm to review. I showed them how every single bond transaction had resulted in the worst possible pricing for the end client for that period of time. Um, handed in my reports, they said they'd take a look at it, and that was about it for me. I resigned. Um, I thought I'd seen everything in the past when I'd seen the former director of advisor education for a national bond dealer repeatedly try to hand in a trade ticket to me um, for a bond that resulted in negative yield the worst. Um, that means that he made commission on the bond trade, but once the client owned it, if the bond was called, he would actually lose money. Now, his direct client was a financial advisor, and that financial advisor was putting that into his end client's account. So ultimately, the, the end client probably would be clueless. Um, so that, that was pretty eye-opening to me. Uh, for the director of advisor education, he was tasked with educating financial advisors on how bonds work and how to manage bond portfolios would be trying to hand in a ticket to me that would result in negative yield to the client but still put money in his own pocket um, as a broker. Well, last month I gotta tell you I saw something that really tops the cake. I personally witnessed the head fixed income trader and managing director for a small broker dealer down south send out a sales idea to about 30 of his brokers telling them to sell their clients these Puerto Rico municipal zeros. These are zero coupon bonds, they're sold at a deep discount and they mature at par. He suggested they purchase the bonds at a price of around 16 and a quarter, mark it up to a little over 18 and a quarter. Well, the same day that this email and sales idea is going out, I'm seeing these same bonds offered on the street or with other dealers at 15 spot 155, which means that this trader was marking the bonds up in a riskless transaction to show to his brokers recommending they mark it up $20 and sell to their clients. That's a total markup of $30 or over 20%. Well, as a courtesy, I let someone at his firm know what was going on. He had miscalculated his bonds. Hopefully they caught it. Um, I don't know. Assuming everything I've just told you is true, my little short story should show you a few things. That it does not matter what advanced degrees, education, or access that you have to the bond market. It's still very inefficient. Okay, And if these guys who manage money for a living are overpaying for their bonds and they're trading in multi-million dollar blocks, what chance do you have in the bond market? Um, my personal uh, opinion here is that the odds are skewed against you in really getting a fair execution. Not that you can't get great deals through your custodian or great deals through your discount broker. It's just that if you were to try to compare them to the rest of the market, you don't have the ability to. So. The question I, I want to propose to you is how do you know that you're getting a good execution on your bond trades? If you buy a bond, how do you know if you couldn't have bought it two, three points cheaper with a phone call? And the answer is most of you don't know. Well, if you realize that's a problem and you are a bond investor, I've got some solutions for you. Uh, I will illustrate them in my upcoming videos. but. Uh, Hopefully this opens your eyes and really grabs your attention. And um, you know, if you like what you see, check out the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.